Welcome back to the third module of EGECG series. In this video, we'll discuss about coronary heart disease that is ischemia and infarction and their ECG changes. Acute coronary syndrome and their ECG changes. If a patient presents to you with chest pain suggestive of acute coronary syndrome, that is with key features like tight central chest pain, usually severe and longer lasting than that of angina, breathlessness, nausea and vomiting and sweating, then ask for history of previous angina or myocardial infarction or any other form of vascular disease like a stroke, transient ischemic attack or peripheral vascular disease and assess for cardiovascular risk factors. An urgent ECG is must in patient with chest pain suggestive of acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome is divided into one category for ST elevated myocardial infarctions and another category for both non ST elevated myocardial infarctions and unstable angina. Electrocardiographically, ST elevated myocardial infarctions demonstrate ST elevation in two or more anatomically continuous leads, with or without ST depressions and T wave inversions in other leads. If the ST segment is depressed or there is T wave inversion or the ECG is normal, then the working diagnosis is either non ST elevated myocardial infarction or unstable angina. Non ST elevated myocardial infarction and unstable angina are differentiated only by elevation of biomarkers that is troponin, indicating myocyte necrosis. Myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction produces three basic changes in leads facing the infarct wall. Number one, elevation of ST segment indicating zone of injury. Number two, Inversion of T-wave indicating effect of surrounding ischemic zone. Number three, deep and wide Q-wave indicating zone of infarct or dead muscle. These are three basic changes in ECG following acute myocardial infarction. Diagnosis is supported by reciprocal changes in leads facing the opposite wall. These leads will show depression of ST segment and tall upright T waves. These changes don't occur simultaneously following infarction in clinical practice. When infarct occurs, first change to appear is elevation of ST segment with tall peaked T wave, which appears within minutes to hours. This means ECC taken immediately after one set of chest pain may appear normal and must be repeated after a few hours if clinically myocardial infarction has been suspected. The ST segment, which is elevated, remains elevated for two to three days and gradually returns to isoelectric line within one to two weeks. Other causes of ST segment elevation are coronary artery vasospasm, left ventricular hypertrophy, and pericarditis. Example, if a 20-year-old physically fit person with viral illness that gradually develops chest pain and is found to have ST elevation and ECG is more likely to have pericarditis rather than ST elevated myocardial infarction. The T-wave, which becomes tall immediately on blocking of coronary artery, becomes inverted after two days and remains inverted for three weeks. Then gradually, it becomes flat and then upright over two to three months. Q-wave, which is indicator of muscle death, appears after a week, then gradually depends and remains permanent and is proportional to the size of infarct. Q waves are called pathological Q waves if it is more than 0.04 second wide and two small boxes deep. Other causes of pathological Q wave rather than transmural infarction are left bundle branch block and Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So now studying the events in chronological order, on first day, ST segment is elevated with upright tall T wave but no Q wave. Over next two days, T waves slowly become inverted and ST segment is still raised. By the end of first week, ST segment returns to isoelectric line 
and T wave will be deeply inverted and Q wave starts appearing. T wave is typically pointed and inverted with symmetrical limbs. In the third week, Q wave becomes fully developed and T wave will gradually become flat and start returning to normal. By the end of three months, ST segment and T wave return to normal and only Q wave will remain permanent. If the size of infarct is small, Q wave may completely disappear. Now, as we have learned to recognize typical changes in leads facing the infarct, let's move forward to localization of the infarct. The ECG changes are based in, in the leads that face the ischemic or infarcted area. Leads 1, AVL and chest leads that is V1 to V6 face anterior wall and so classical changes in anterior wall infarction. Leads 2, 3 and AVF face inferior wall and so classical changes in inferior wall infarction. This also means in anterior wall infarction, leads 2, 2, 3 and AVF so reciprocal changes. And in inferior wall infarction, let's 1, AVL and V1 to V6 so reciprocal changes, that is ST segment depression and tall upright T waves. The extent of anterior wall infarct can be further studied in chest leads. When there has been anteroceptal infarction, abnormalities are found in one or more leads from V1 to V4 while anterolateral infarction produces changes from V4 to V6. Changes may or may not appear in leads AVL and lead 1. Changes in all the chest leads that is V1 to V6 is called extensive anterior infarct. Infarction of the posterior wall of the left ventricle does not cause ST elevation or Q waves in the standard leads but can be diagnosed by the presence of reciprocal changes that is ST segment depression and a tall R wave in leads V1 to V4. Some infarctions, especially inferior, also involve the right ventricle. This may be identified by recording from additional leads placed over the right precordium. Now, to know which coronary artery has been blocked, we need to study blood supply of the heart. Anterior wall of the heart is supplied by anterior descending artery which is a branch of left coronary artery. Posterior wall is supplied by left circumflex artery which is a branch of left coronary artery. And the inferior wall is supplied by posterior descending artery which is a branch of right coronary artery. Placing the leads over this anatomy of the heart, we get that changes in V1 to V6 represent anterior myocardial infarction. Changes in leads V1 to V6 also in lead 1 and AVL represent extensive anterior myocardial infarction. Changes in leads 2, 3 and AVF represent inferior myocardial infarction. Changes in leads from V1 to V3 or V4 represent anteroceptal myocardial infarction and changes in leads V4 to V6 represent anterolateral myocardial infarction, changes in leads from V4 to V6 and also in lead 1 and AVL represent lateral myocardial infarction, and changes in leads 1 and AVL represent high lateral myocardial infarction. To confirm the diagnosis of myocardial infarction, there must be changes in two continuous leads of single group representing a area. Side note, if Q wave is present only in lead 3, this may be due to high diaphragm, so retake the ECG in deep inspiration and if Q wave is non-pathological now, then Q wave will reduce in size or disappear. ST segment elevation, if persist after 6 months, it suggests ventricular aneurysm. Now moving forward to myocardial ischemia. Acute myocardial ischemia. Let's consider a patient with atherosclerotic narrowing of the coronary vessels. He is comfortable at rest but during exercise gets anginal pain. This is due to subendocardial ischemia which happens when there is incomplete blockage. Let's suppose 70% in coronary artery. In that situation at rest there is enough blood flow to meet the demand of the myocardium. But during exercise it is not enough to meet the myocardium's increased demand. Seen on ECG in the form of ST segment depression which disappears with rest as demand reduces. 
This ECG shows ST segment depression of 2 mm during the attack of angina. The same lead in the same patient after few hours shows isoelectric ST segment. This is typical change in angina pectoris which shows temporary ST segment depression. Now let's compare it with change in myocardial infarction. When a coronary vessel gets blocked causing an infarct, ECG shows a ST segment elevation in the leads facing the infarcted area. While in acute myocardial ischemia, ECG shows temporary ST segment depression. Acute myocardial ischemia is also seen during stress test or exercise test. In positive stress test, there will be depression of ST segment in leads facing the ischemic area. The change is most prominently seen in leads V5 and V6. The criteria for diagnosing myocardial ischemia are J point, which is where QRS complex meets ST segment should be depressed by at least 1 mm. Depressed ST segment should be horizontal or downward sloping but not upward sloping. Only if J point sloping is more than 2 mm, then upward sloping ST segment may be considered as pathological. As in myocardial infarction, if the changes are seen in leads 1, AVL, V4 to V6, it indicates ischemia of anterior wall and if the changes are seen in leads 2, 3, AVF, it indicates ischemia of inferior wall. But if more than one coronary vessels are blocked, the changes are seen in many leads. The ischemic changes are never seen in leads V1 and V2. ST segment depression in leads V1 and V2 is only seen in right ventricular hypertrophy with strain and in true posterior wall infarction. Non-acute myocardial ischemia. If leads V5 and V6 so ST segment depression and flat or inverted T waves in a patient without left ventricular hypertrophy, myocardial ischemia is suspected. Another change that may be seen is T-wave inversion in anterior or posterior limb leads. In absence of chest pain or infarct, T-wave inversion suggests myocardial ischemia. So summary is, non-acute myocardial ischemia may be diagnosed from ST segment depression in leads V5 and V6 with flattening or inversion of T-waves and T-wave inversions in limb leads. Side note. If ST segment is depressed in a curve, it is due to digitalis effect, which is when patient takes the medication digoxin rather than being due to subendocardial ischemia. We have furthermore examples. This ECG shows deeply inverted T wave in chest leads, that is from V1 to V6, and ST segment depression, and Q wave is absent. So diagnosis is non-ST elevated myocardial infarction or subendocardial ischemia. We have another ECG showing deep Q wave in list 2, 3 and AVF which represent inferior myocardial infarction and also deep Q wave in list V1 to V3 showing septal myocardial infarction. This may be inferior myocardial infarction with septal extension. Here we have ECG showing ST segment elevation in leads 2, 3 and AVF and hyperacute T waves in leads 2, 3 and AVF. Q wave is absent. This represents acute inferior myocardial infarction. This ECG shows ST segment elevation with upward convexity in leads V1 to V6 and pathological Q wave and T inversion. So this is ECG of acute extensive anterior myocardial infarction. This ECG shows tall and slightly wide R wave in leads V1 to V2 and upright tall and wide T waves in leads V1 to V2 along with ST segment depression. This is true posterior myocardial infarction. So this is all for today. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Stay tuned.